Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, I grew up on a, on a little farm in the outback of, uh, of Australia uh, with, with my... Thanks. With my... Uh, with my mum, my dad, and my three older brothers on this tiny little pig farm. And it was a pig farm that was sort of like a, one of those battery pig farms where the, where the pigs are just locked up in these sheds. They're never allowed outside. They just stand up and sit down and get bread, and that's all they do. And uh, when I was about six years old, I, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, and I ran up to the pig shed, and I set free <laughs> all of the pigs. <laughs> and I ran back to my room, and, and I went back to sleep. And uh, I awoke the next morning to my dad shaking me awake. And my dad took me up to the pig shed. And none of the pigs had moved. <laughs> they all just stayed in, the, in, the, in their pens. And, and, and my dad looked at me and he, and he just said, See, they want to be here. I hope you've learned something. My dad is this very, very serious, stern, impatient type of man and, uh, and, and he dominated my life. So I had to work on the pig farm with him every day growing up. But my dad wasn't just a pig farmer. He was a jack of all trades, my dad. And so he wasn't just a pig farmer. He was also uh, my school teacher. And I don't mean a teacher at my school. I mean my actual teacher. But he wasn't just, just my teacher. So I saw dad every day at school and every day working on the pig farm with him as well. So, so all I had were weekends. Weekends were my times away from dad. And uh, on Sunday, me and my family would go to church. Uh, Dad was the minister at the local church. <laughs> so all I had was Saturdays. Saturdays were my respite from Dad. And, and when you grow up in the outback in Australia in these tiny little areas, all you do on Saturdays is play sports. Dad was my football coach, my basketball coach, and my tennis coach. He was everything in my life. This very serious, stern, and impatient man. And my dad, this, this serious man, he says he's never said a swear word in his entire life. And uh, we couldn't believe this as kids, that he'd never said a swear word. And, uh, and even as kids, I'd say, how is this possible, Dad? How is this possible that you've never said a swear word? And he had the same answer every time. It was just, there are other words you can use, and there's no need for that language. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, I've seen him walk around the back of the car at night time in the darkness and hit his shin so hard on the tow bar of the car that he's just dropped to his knees, looked up at the moon, raised his fists, and just yelled, curses! He yells, curses! <laughs> Like a Scooby-Doo villain, he yells curses. <laughs> these are the other words that my dad uses instead of swearing, is, is these kind of words. And, and the other thing he does instead of swearing is he just yells his feelings. So dad will just be out working on the farm and, and we'll just hear this scream, just, I'm angry. <laughs> I'm upset. I'm annoyed. He just yells his feelings. So when I, when, I, when I turned 19 years old, farm life wasn't for me. I had to get away from the farm. I turned 19 years old, I started going to university and I moved to the city. I, I went to university and I studied the arts and I became a vegetarian. <laughs> and around this time was also the time when my second oldest brother, Alf, moved to a place called Kangaroo Island. And it's this little island off the coast of South Australia. There's this beautiful natural wonderland, Kangaroo Island. There's all kangaroos and koalas and wallabies, all the natural wonder, wonderland things that you guys want to see, all you tourists. And uh, there's no introduced species on Kangaroo Island either, so that's why these natural things get to get to thrive. And uh, my dad loves Kangaroo Island. He goes and visits my brother every single weekend, and, and he loves Kangaroo Island. He's never been anywhere else in the world, my dad. Never traveled, never even been on a plane. And uh, he's got the same excuse for not doing this, and that is, why would I need to go anywhere? Kangaroo Island is right there. <laughs> and even now, I'll say to him things like, I've been to Japan and places like that, Dad. He said, I've seen Japanese people on Kangaroo Island. Why do I need to go anywhere else? <laughs> And so my dad visits my second oldest brother every weekend and he visits so much that he managed to get a job on Kangaroo Island as, uh, as the minister at the local church on the, on the Sunday. And uh, he gets another job uh, after church going hunting with these farmers and these hunters and going out into these national parks and hunting these wild pigs, which are the only introduced species on Kangaroo Island. And, uh, and he goes out hunting these wild pigs and I'd never been to Kangaroo Island before. I'd moved to the city, but I go to Kangaroo Island to visit my brother and my dad is there. We go to church on the Sunday, and after church, Dad says, do you want to come hunting with me? And I say, no. <laughs> and he says, do you just want to come and check it out? It's in this beautiful national park. It's beautiful. Do you want to just come and check it out? And I say, okay, that, that sounds like something I would like to see. So I, so I go to this national park with my dad. And out the front of the national park, there's this big shed. And I walk into this shed, and there's all these, these hunters and these farmers just loading up these trucks with guns and then driving off into this national park hunting these wild pigs. And Dad says again, are you sure you don't want to come hunting with me? 
And I say, oh, no, I don't need to do that. And he says, okay, that, that's fine. We've organized, I'll organize a ride home for you to, to your brother's house. That's fine. Uh, just help me load up this truck with guns and then you can go. <laughs> and dad hands me a gun. And I don't know if you've ever held a gun before. I'm in America, you're probably all holding right now. I don't know, but to... <laughs> some of you will know this. Dad hands me a gun and it is awesome. And I feel the weight of this gun. I feel this weird sense of power. And I just go, yeah, let's shoot something. I want to shoot something. I want to shoot this thing in my hands. And dad says, great, we load up this truck with guns. And then dad and I just drive this truck off through this national park. We park the truck. And then dad and I just walk through this national park, just hunting these wild pigs. After about three hours, dad has shot six wild pigs. I have shot none. I enjoy looking through the scope at things. I, I, I put mud under my eyes and I'm jumping out from bushes going, pow, pow, pow. I'm having a really good time. <laughs> and I keep looking through my scope at things and sort of messing around and dad keeps thinking I'm going to shoot something when I'm not. I'm just sort of looking through this thing and he's getting very annoyed with me because he's screaming I'm annoyed. And, <laughs> and he says, look, you're annoying me. Do you want to shoot something? And I say, no, dad, I'm having a great time. This is fun. I feel like I'm a predator or something like this. I'm having a great time. And dad says, no, 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 I'm going to find you something to shoot. And he disappears off through these trees and he, and he comes back about 10 minutes later and he whispers, I found you something. And I follow him through these trees and he tells me to look through the bushes through my scope and I look through my scope and I see a pig. And it is a big pig. And it is just laying in some mud. And it has a bunch of little babies just surrounding it and suckling to its teeth. And I'm looking at this sleeping mother pig through my scope and dad just whispers in my ear, it's easy. <laughs> and I, I'm looking at this pig and I say, I know this is easy dad, but this is a bit fucked, don't you think? And he says, there's no need for that language. And I'm looking at this pig and dad says, it's easy, they're an introduced species, they're, they're, you're helping, you're helping, they, they ruin the environment, you're helping, you can do this. And, I, and I'm looking at this pig and I think, I can't do, I can't do this, I can't, I can't do this. And I turn to my dad and I say, do I have to shoot the little babies as well? And he says, no, just shoot the mum, they'll die by themselves. <laughs> and I'm looking at this pig and dad says again, it's easy, it's easy, you're helping, you can do this. And I think, yes, I can do this. And I sit for what feels like forever, just looking at this sleeping mother pig, and I think, no, I can do this. I get the pig's head in my sights, I close my eyes, and I pull the trigger. When I open my eyes, I see Dad's back in front of me. And I see it just drop to the right. And I have just shot Dad in the back. I drop the gun in shock and dad swings around, grabs himself by the shoulder as blood comes out from between his fingers. He looks at me, his eyes are wide and he just says, you fucking shot me. <laughs> and then he just unleashes this tirade of abuse. It's, you effing shot me, I am effing dead. You have effing killed me. Do you know where we are? We're in the middle of nowhere. I am effing dead. And secretly, in the back of my brain, that little switch just wants me to go, there's no need for that language, but I don't say anything like, like that. And, and dad, dad just keeps on this tirade of abuse. He just says, I can't believe it's you. Out of all of my sons, you're the one who kills me. The vegetarian. The city boy. And, and he pulls out his phone, he throws his phone at me and just says, call mum, call mum, tell you've killed me and I'm dead. And I get, a, I get his phone and I, I dial emergency 911, I'm not an idiot. And I, I, I dial 911 and I say, I've just sh shot my dad. And, and they say, where are you? And I say, Kangaroo Island. And they say, we need you to be a bit more specific than, than that. And I say, we're in a national park, people go hunting here. I, I don't know, and they say, we think we know where you are. Uh, there, there's a property about a kilometer away. Do you think you can get him to that property? And I say, yeah, he seems okay. And I hang up from them and I tell dad, we've, we've got to get to this, this property and, and, uh, and he knows where it is. And we, we walk back to where we've, we've parked the truck. I, I put dad in the passenger side of the truck. I run around to the driver's side of the truck. I start the truck up and I can't drive a stick shift. <laughs> and this is a big old truck with one of these things on the steering wheel. And all I do is I grind it into a gear and we bounce forwards and stop. And dad screams in pain. I start it up again. I grind it into a different gear and we bounce forwards and stop again. 
And dad screams again, then turns to me and says, get out. And I get out of the truck and walk around to the passenger side as dad slides along the seat, leaving this trail of blood along the back of the seat and drives himself to this property. Now all they've told me to do on the emergency line is just to make sure that dad stays awake, which is good now that he's driving. <laughs> and he drives himself to this property, the helicopter is there, they load him into the back of the helicopter and he gets taken to hospital for free. <laughs> the next thing I remember, my mum walks out of the surgery and says, he's going to be okay. He's lost his collarbone, and he had very little blood left in his body when he got here, but he's going to be okay. And she says, do you want to go and visit him? <laughs> and I say, <laughs> no. I do eventually go in and visit him, and Dad looks at me and says, I hope you've learned something. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I did learn something. I learned that sometimes that kind of language is necessary. <laughs> 10 years later, I'll also learn another thing. Dad has almost been shot about 12 times by different friends and people who goes hunting with him because he gets impatient and jumps in front of them just as they're about to shoot something. <laughs> Thank you very much.